Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. So, shh, 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 shh. so we've got lots and lots to do today. So let's get to it. Any questions before we get to it? Okay, so today's what? The tenth? Is it really? I've been thinking it's the tenth all day. My my. Okay. So. Uh, I have a question. Let's consider the set A, okay, and you'll, uh, you know, for, well, I'll write it like this. A is equal to 0 to 1. A in fact, let's make it 0 to 1 like so. By that, I mean an, an interval. Let me erase that so that it looks better. An interval in the real line. So my first question for you is, what is the, what is the uh, maximum of A? It's 1. OK, so that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't a particularly profound question. Uh, how about, please tell me, what is, the, uh, what is the, the minimum of A? It doesn't have one. It doesn't have a minimum. Okay. So now if someone if someone really said, "Oh, come on, you know what I'm talking about." You know which one I mean. Which one do you suspect they mean? <laughs> they mean they would mean so which element? They would you would say, "Well, 0." Okay, but what's what's the what's the uh, what's the reason that 0 couldn't possibly be the minimum of this set? It's not in the set. So it couldn't possibly be the minimum. Uh, so, so uh, now what we have to do is we're going to come up with another notion, which I heard some of you say, uh, which, which would tell us that the something or other of this set is, uh, is zero. Okay, so enable, uh, in, in order to be able to do this, uh, we need a definition, a, a multitude of definitions, in fact. So in the first place, uh, so we'll say let... A be a subset of the reals. So this is the real line, not, not vectors, but a subset of the reals. Uh, a lower bound uh, of A is an x in the reals such that this x is less or equal to A <coughs> for all, uh, sorry, less or equal to little a, for all little a in a. Okay, so for example, uh, if, this is, <clears throat> if this is our uh, set, say like this, so you can imagine that this is 0 to 1, the same as that a up there if you like. So if I, if, I, if I just do say that, that that's 0 and that's 1, could, could somebody tell us one, one, a particular lower bound? 0, right? 0 is a, is, is a lower bound. 0 is a lower bound. What, are there any others? Negative 2451, okay, is a lower bound. I love it. So there's, there's lots of lower bounds. There's lots of them. <coughs> Uh, good. <clears throat> so two, I'm just going to write upper bound because I think that you can understand what that means. So an upper bound is, is, is a value that's greater than or equal to, to all values uh, in the set. So how about, how about again for this set, uh, what, what's one particular upper bound? One. One is an upper bound. What's another one? 2451. Okay, great. So those are those are upper bounds. So I'm just going to write upper bound because I think that you can that, that that's perfectly uh, intelligible. So uh, how about how about uh, how about how about this question? Uh, suppose that I say that A is the set uh, 
2451 to infinity, then, uh, well, what's, uh, what's the minimum of this set? 2451, okay? And if I, if I was to, you know, edit this and make that a parenthesis instead of a, instead of a bracket, then what would be the minimum in that case? There wouldn't be a minimum, right? Okay, what is the maximum of this set? There is no maximum. There is no maximum. Furthermore, uh, would you please tell me, uh, could you tell me a particular uh, upper bound for this set? There are none. Right, there are no reals. Uh, there, there are no upper bounds for this set. There's a, there's a multitude of lower bounds, but there's no upper bound. Okay, so what I want you to see is that these two notions of there is no max for this set and also there is no, uh, there is no upper bound for this set, th those are in agreement. So the place where, where students kind of, when you're trying to introduce this concept is consider this set. Is there a lower bound for this set? A lower bound for this set? Yes. There's lots of them. There's lots of lower bounds for this set. Is there a minimum for this set? No, and that's a little bit disturbing. So, so what we need is, is finally we need uh, a notion that where we can say, okay, uh, I know this set doesn't have a minimum, but I want to say that it has a something, and I want that something to be zero. Okay, so what's the name of that something? Infimum. Infimum. So the definition in the first place uh, well, we have let, let A be a subset of the reals. Uh, then the infimum, so I'll write it out one time. INF EMUM of A denoted INF of A is what? The maximum of all lower bounds. The maximum of all lower bounds. Or if you like, the greatest lower bound is the greatest lower bound. And, you know, that, that, that's kind of an English phrase. Let's be really precise. Uh, that is to say, if X, if capital X is the set of all lower bounds, of A, then what? Yeah, then the infimum of set A is the maximum of set X. <laughs> That's a little disturbing, right? <laughs> to get the smallest one, to get the smallest one, <laughs> you compute the maximum of something else. But do understand what it's saying. If you look at this red set right here, consider all, consider all possible lower bounds. So here, here's one, negative 2451, negative 2450 is also one, and there's a lot of them back here, like negative pi and things like that. This whole set back here, this whole set back here, terminating there, does it have a maximum? It does. It does have a maximum, and the maximum of the set of all possible lower bounds is the infimum of this set. Now, one thing you have to be careful about is that given an A, well, in the first place, given a set, does the maximum of that set always exist? No, right? Because here's an example of a set that has no max. As a result, as a result, because infimum is defined in terms of maximum, it can be the case that a set has no infimum. So can you give me such an example? Yeah, like the set of all reals, for example. <coughs> the, the, the set of all reals has no infimum. The set of all integers has no infimum either. There's no, there's no lower bound what, at all. Yes? So just to make sure that this is what we're saying is that um, the maximum of x is, I guess we could be the first number to appear in the set of a. Because it would be the first number that's less than or equal to a. 
Well, uh, I'm not sure. We I'm not sure what you mean. As in, the the set of x all less than or equal to a, mm -hmm. uh, there must be some a that's equal to x, and the rest are less than that. Well, no, well, for example, what what is the infimum of this set? Something just greater than zero, but you can't figure it out. No, you can. the The infimum of this set is is exactly zero. You can think of it like if you had an open interval, if you had an open interval, the infimum is the left endpoint, even if it's not there. Okay. Okay. You you can kind of rough and ready think of it that way. Yes. So if a is zero to one, both in brackets, does it also not have an infimum? It it does have an infimum. Yes. Because well, okay. So let 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 me move. Let me finish the definition, and then we'll go on to computing some examples. Okay. So uh, just, like, just like minimum ha has its counterpart maximum, infimum has its counterpart, what's, what is it? <laughs> Supremum. OK, supremum of A <coughs> denoted, denoted sup A okay, is then so for infimum, it's the greatest of all lower bounds for infimum. So what is it for supremum? The, yes, the smallest of all upper bounds. So, uh, so is the least upper bound. That is to say, if x is the set of all upper bounds, if x is the set of all upper bounds, then what is the uh, up, what I mean is upper bounds of A. If x is the set of all upper bounds of A, then what's the supremum of A? The minimum of x. So the supremum of A is the minimum of x. <clears throat> okay. Very good. So let, let's do some calculation and make sure that, that we're all clear about this. No. So, for example, uh, well, let's consider. How about what is what is the infimum of the naturals? And remember how the naturals are defined in our class. So what's the, inf what's the infimum of the naturals? Zero. 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 Uh, because what is the set of all lower bounds? Right. Well, not e all all, Yeah? All non-positive non numbers is negative infinity to zero. So I think we can all agree that every negative number is a lower bound for the naturals. Is it also true that zero is a lower bound for the naturals? Even if zero is in the naturals? The right, the we, because that's the definition, less or equal, right? So, so this is the set of all lower bounds. And what's the maximum of this in the first place? Does this set have a maximum? Yes, yes and what is it? Zero. OK. How about what is the supremum of the naturals? This is undefined or d does not exist, right? Uh, why is that? Let, because what is the set of all upper bounds? The null set. So is, uh, do y'all have? In y'all's classes, was it denoted with capital phi? Or was it denoted with empty braces? So which one is the one? E either one is fine? OK. So, so the set of all upper bounds is empty. Is empty. And then in that case, what is the minimum of an, the empty set? It's not defined. OK. <clears throat> Good. Uh, how about, how about? Uh, how about if I say that the set A is equal to 
say, uh, 2451 <laughs> uh, Union. Uh, how about how about uh, Union? Union 99, the, the point 99, the integer 99 and 100. Okay, so that, that's, that's a closed interval. And then we're also going to include 99 and 100 because that, that sounds great. So then what, in that case, what is the infimum of A? It's 24. Okay, and then what's the supremum of A? 100. Okay, the reason why, sort of uh, in, in, intuitively, if you like, is that is that over here we've got this bit, uh, 2451. We've got we've got that much right there, and then over here, we've also got 99 and 100. And we're not including it, any of the things in between them. We're just including those two. So, for example, right here, I might be pointing at like uh, 70. Is 70 an upper bound? No, it's not an upper bound. Uh, you might say, but it's an upper bound of that. And I would say, well, that's not relevant, right? Because you've got to be greater, greater than all the things. So over here is the set of all upper bounds. And over here is the set of all lower bounds. So any question about this? So did I answer your question about infant soup? Oh, good. Any questions about this? OK. <clears throat> good. So now, uh, similarly, uh, let, no, well, I need uh, definition here. Uh, let f be defined <coughs> from Rn to R, from Rn to R. Well, okay, let's back up, because let's do it like this. From A to R, where, uh, where A is a subset of Rn. So what I mean is that f f can take vectors as inputs and it produces scalars as outputs. So, so this kind of function. Uh, we're going to extend, we're going to define, uh, yeah, thank you, this should be Rn. That's what just changed. Uh, so define f with a party hat, with a tilde, uh, of x. Uh, well, from all of Rn, to R uh, by F with a party hat of X is um, F of X when X is an A and zero otherwise. Okay, so what this is saying, <clears throat> What this is saying is that you might have a function that is, say, from R2 to R, just for sake of argument so I can draw something. Uh, so you've got a function that maps points on the plane to, uh, to scalars. And furthermore, maybe we have this set A is the only place where the function is defined. So you could take you could take a function you, you could take a point in set A and you could evaluate f there you could evaluate f at that point but you could not evaluate f out here because that's not part that's not in the domain of f so what is f tilde then in relation to this in relation to f Well, so, so notice, notice that the domain of, of F tilde is all of the, in this example, it would be all of the plane. So, so what's, the, what's the relationship between F and F tilde? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you could say, okay, suppo suppose, that, suppose that F does this, like this is the surface defined by F, uh, that it ends up looking, you know, kind of wavy or something like that. So this is the image of Y is, uh, y is well, in this case, uh, I'll just write it like this, of X. So that, that's, the, that's the height. Notably, F, F has no defined heights outside of that set. But F tilde does. What's the height? Zero. Zero. So all that F tilde is is just the trivial extension of, of F to the whole plane, which is just to say that, well, if you, if you want to attempt to evaluate at some point that wasn't in F's domain, then the answer is going to be zero. So that's what it's saying. So definition. Uh, of a bounded set. <coughs> so A, a subset of Rn, is called bounded. I've, in fact, I think we already said this but earlier in the semester, but I'll say it again. Is bounded if there exists a positive R such that A is a subset of the ball of radius R centered at the origin. So can someone explain what this definition is saying? If you could fit A in an open ball then you have a given radius that Right. So set set A is, you know, all over the space possibly. And then the question is is can you can you make a ball centered at the origin such that set A would be contained entirely in the origin? Okay, the ball might have to be very big, but as long as it's finite this, this set is called bounded. Okay. <clears throat> so, furthermore, uh, so this is a bounded, a bounded set. <clears throat> uh, two uh, function f from a set a still a subset of Rn to the reals. Uh, is called bounded if the image of F is bounded uh, that is to say give, given a function uh, defined on set A uh, then you compute all possible outputs and you collect them into a set that you're calling the image of A uh, if, if that set is bounded, then, then the function is, is called bounded. So now, lot, lots of students have, have in, in, so, in some cases, difficulty imagining what, so, uh, an example of a function that's not <coughs> bounded. So can you give me one that's not bounded? Well, well for, for example, y is x on all the reals, right? That's sort of like tri <laughs> trivially, so it just sort of just real slowly just just keeps going. Okay. Uh, can, can, you give me an can you give me an example of a function that is defined only on a bounded set, but the image is unbounded? Okay, I like that. Uh, so so, so the, the offered suggestion was, how about the natural log function on the interval 0 to 1? Okay, so then uh, or did you mean closed at one? It doesn't matter, right? I mean, uh, does it doesn't have to be closed at zero because it's been it's undefined, or it, it like shoots off. Well, you can't. You can't. Okay, yeah, never mind. You, you, <laughs> you can't input zero into the log function. Uh, but nevertheless, nevertheless, the log function. So this this is right, uh, in the sense that the log function does does the following. Uh, so what input causes the output to be one? Uh, sorry, what input causes the output to be zero? One. So if you plug in, if you plug in one, you get zero. So, and then the log function very slowly starts going up from here. But that's not the part we're interested in, right? So zero to one is this little bit right here. What does it do as you start going from one to the left? You go down, right? How far? all the way, right? <clears throat> so that goes, it's unbounded below. 
So what I want you to observe, it, well, what is the image if, if, if log, if f of x is log of x, then what is the image of f uh, for, for, for this f and that a? What is the image? Right. It's this set right here. So it's this all the way down. That set is the image. And then the question is, is that now you look at this, you look at this axis, this one-dimensional axis, and you ask, can I make a one-dimensional ball centered here at the origin such that all this green stuff will be contained in that ball? Can you? You cannot. So here's an example of a function that's defined on a bounded set, yet is unbounded. Uh, well, finally, uh, three. If A is bounded, and F from A to the reals uh, is bounded, so that is to say, su suppose that we have the case that we have a domain that is bounded and a function defined on, the, on that domain which is also <coughs> bounded then this is the specific case that we're most interested in, so we're going to give a specific name to this case. Such a, such a function is said to be bounded with bounded support. So uh, if, if this is the case, then uh, we say that f is bounded with bounded support. Uh, bounded support. And so is its trivial extension to the whole to the whole space. Because remember, what's the support? The output is not zero. Yeah, everywhere the output's not zero. So suppose that suppose that you have F that's defined on an A and A is bounded. Then we could extend it to the whole input space by saying it's zero everywhere else. So if we okay I need to write it down because I'm, I'm getting <coughs> confused looks. <coughs> so what, what I'm saying in this remark is that suppose that f from a to the reals is bounded with bounded support. Suppose that's the case. <coughs> then so is f tilde. Now why is that? Yes. Okay. So what's the domain of definition of F tilde? The whole space, wherever A is sitting. So if so A is sitting inside of R N. <coughs> so why is why is F bounded with bounded support? So in the first place, why is why why is F tilde bounded? Because F is bounded, right? So it might be the case that, that f itself never took on the value 0. That, that, could, that could be true. Uh, but then f tilde is going to take on the value 0 in lots of places. But that doesn't change whether or not uh, the resulting set is bounded, because that's just one point modification. Good. So any questions about this? OK. So next definition. We'll define 1 little m, well, okay, I need to say let f from set a to the reals with a being a subset of rn, define little m subscript a of f. So define this to be the emphemum, so i and f, of the image Of, uh, of f on a. <coughs> uh, what am I? Yeah, like this. So what does this mean? So another, another way to say this is to say that it's the emphemum for all inputs in a of the set of f of x. So what is this? 
it's kind of like it's kind of like the 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 minimum of 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 f, but not really. Why not really? Well, yes. Right. Okay. So, uh, an an example would be something like this. Say, uh, how about as trivial as possible? F of x is x on uh, zero to one. So if you if you were to look at this, then it would look like this. That would be the the graph of the function. Then this, if we do this. Then what is set A in this picture? Zero to one. So in particular, this is set A. And what is the what is the image of F? It, it's on. It, I agree that it's also zero to one. But where is it? It's on the vertical axis, right? It's sitting here. So this here is the image of A. And then, so that means that somehow little m subscript A of F has something to do with this blue set. What is it? It's that one, right? It's that point that doesn't happen to be there. Okay, so if I defined little m being the imp, yes? So if your integral included zero, would the minimum of the image of x not exist? Right. Or would it not exist? It would, it would still exist. Okay. So, so l let's be clear. Uh, suppose, well, let's say it like this. The infimum of the set, that's an interval, is what? is zero. The infimum of this set is what? Also zero. So does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. And it's similar things for, for, for supremum. Okay, so if, if we define little m uh, with inf, then what, what is certainly the next thing I'm going to define? Big M with soup. Okay. So, uh, big M subscript A of F is the supremum of the image of F, which is to say it's the supremum, uh, doesn't have an I, of all X in A of F of X. So on this picture, where, wh wh what, is, what is big M subscript A of F? Its, its numerical value would be, would be one, and its position right, is right there. Okay, so now, we said let, let f be defined in this way, and I drew a particular picture, but don't, me, don't be misled. L little m and big M don't need to exist. In what case, in what case do little m and big M exist? When the function is bounded, right? That's when. So what we're, when I say that we're talking about a function uh, that's bounded with bounded support, that means that, uh, that means that in a sense, the support, the place where the function is non-zero is small-ish. And furthermore, we can always compute these two values. We can always compute them. Okay, three. The oscillation on set A of f is defined as uh, the difference, uh, oops, the difference between these two. Okay, so, so that, I think this uh, probably uh, merits a, a picture. So, for example, Here's, uh, here's the domain where this function is defined, say, from here 
to here. And I'm, I'm drawing a picture like this, but understand that the domain is, is vectors. I mean, it, look, I'm, it looks like I'm drawing an interval, but understand that we're talking about uh, vectors. Suppose that, suppose that the function is def is, has a definition like the following. this, say. Okay. So I just visually now, if this is the set A, if that's the set A, then where, where is the image of F? It's, it's some set over here, right? It's some set over here, so let's draw it. So I see, I see that, I see this. Depending on the way you drew it, do, do, do they line up? I don't know. Something in there? No, it looks like there's a gap. So, so this is the image of the function. That's the image. Uh, what what is uh, what is capital M? It's that point, right? It's that highest point, uh, which is present. What is lower M? It's that point, which isn't present, but that's still the value of of little m. What is the oscillation? The difference between those two. So, this size right here, that's the oscillation. Okay, now, uh, just as an aside, as an aside, at this point right here, at this input, you can see that the function is not continuous. Okay, because the limit from the left, it, so supposing this to be now really uh, scalar inputs, the limit from the left is not the same as the limit from the right. So you can then, you can then extend uh, the definition of oscillation to say, well, what's the oscillation of a function at a point? So in that case, uh, the limit of a function at a point exists exactly when the oscillation is zero. And then that lets you quantify just how not continuous is this function. How not continuous is this function? Well, you could get out your ruler and measure that and say, well, I can see that the oscillation is two centimeters. That's how far away it is from being continuous. And at this point, it is continuous uh, because the oscillation there is zero. Good. Any question about this? Okay, so now just like we uh, cut up uh, the, the in, in scalar calculus, we cut up the domain into little bitty intervals and then started constructing rectangles, we need to do a similar, similar thing, uh, but we need, to, we need to do this in Rn. So that raises the question of, wow, how are we going to do that? How are we going to talk about 24-dimensional rectangles? Okay. So to make that work, we're going to make a construction that's quite similar. Do you remember the, the proof of the, what was it called? It escapes me now. Uh, the one that says that uh, a, 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 every sequence that's contained in a, in a compact set must have a convergent subsequence. Yeah, the bolzano weierstrass theorem. Do you remember when we were talking about the bolzano weierstrass theorem and we, we were talking about the binary representation of, of numbers? And we could say, okay, well, let's, let's subdivide the, the intervals here and there. Okay, so this is a construction quite similar to it. So here we go. <coughs> Define uh, the dyadic cube. Okay, so what we're denoting by C vector K and then capital N, a subset of R N. So notably, uh, this is a capital N and that's a lowercase n, and it's a little bit unfortunate that they're both n's, but do understand that they're different. Uh, this dyadic cube 
is defined as the following set. It's the set of all x in Rn <coughs> such that ki over 2 to exponent n is less or equal to uh, xi is less than ki and this is uh, plus 1 so that's that plus 1 is not in the index it's it's the, the it's ki and then add 1 to that uh, over 2 to n where <coughs> k is this vector, k1 down to kn, and this is an element of uh, zn. So what do I mean by zn? Integers, right? So what I mean is that k is a column of, of integers, and they, they could possibly be negative. OK, so now this is kind of a strange definition. Let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can make sense of it. <coughs> OK. So for example, uh, so I'm going to draw an R2, because that's more or less the best that I can do. So let's see what it is like. So what, what N represents, what capital N represents, that represents the level of how fine you're, you're making the cubes. So suppose that we're at uh, level zero. Level zero. That, that'd, be, that'd be a nice place to start. So at level zero, that is to say capital N is zero, how big is two to zero? One. Okay, so I'm going to make marks every, uh, at every integer, one. At, at, at every one. So, uh, so here's a mark. Here's a mark. Uh, I'll go ahead and extend this this way. Here's a mark. Extend this this way. And here's a, a mark. <coughs> this way. So what I want you to see, what I want you to take away from this, is I'm making a grid. And all of these are cubes. Of course, since it's on the plane, we usually call these squares. Uh, this, this covers the whole plane. So every single point uh, is in exactly one of these squares. Because if you look at the definition, where it says less or equal on that side, but less than on this side, what, what I really mean by this square is that we're including everything that's, that's on this edge and this edge but not, not these edges. So those edges are not included. So for example, if I point exactly at that point that's on that line, which, which cube is it in? The one on the right. It's not in the one on the left. Okay, good. So now, which, which, which cube is which? So in the first place, what, is, what does k mean? What, what, what's, uh, what's k going to mean? So that is the index of the lower left corner. So uh, that, that's, the, that's the index of the lower left corner. So this is 0, 0. This cube is the cube that's at index 0, 0 and also at level 0. OK, that, that whole thing. Uh, now, which cube am I pointing to? So this is 0, and then 1, 2. So we have to figure out where the lower left corner is. It's, it's right there. So C21. At level 0. So all of these cubes that, that you can see, they're all at level 0. The only thing that's changing is their index. Now, just for sake of argument, what would this one right underneath this one be? So right there. 0, negative 1, 
at level zero. Okay. So can we? Yes. Why are they all at level zero? Be, because well, I'm about to. I'm I'm moving to that exactly now. So now you might say, uh, well, uh, these these cubes are too big for for me. You might. You know, if you're looking at YouTube, you might, it might, you might say, oh, it's too pixelated, right? The, the pixels are too big. I want, uh, I want it to be a higher definition picture. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll double the resolution in, in all dimensions. So there's two dimensions here. So specifically what I'll say is we're going to make a new mesh of cubes, and we're going to do that by subdividing each cube in all dimensions. So for example, we'll take this cube and subdivide it in the, in the horizontal dimension and also in the vertical dimension. So now that cube has become four, four cubes. Okay. So now all of, the, all of these cubes are now at level one because what is their width and height? Half. And how do you get half from this formula? How do you get, it, supposing that's a one, how do you get, uh, how do you get that to be half when n is one? So that being the case, would you please tell me what is what is the name of that cube? So can we agree that 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 we need to find out the coordinates of that corner? Okay. So now you have to consider it the the green mesh. How far to the right do you have to go to get to there? So that's one, two. And how far uh, in the second coordinate do you have to go? Well, one, two, three. So two in the horizontal coordinate, three in the vertical coordinate. So this is C, two, three, at resolution, or level, one. OK. Uh, how, about, how about, please tell me, what is, uh, what is this one? Okay, right. It's got, so we're looking for that corner. It's at one, and this would be two, four, five. Yeah, good. So uh, five, one at level zero. Uh, one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> level one. Uh, okay, but then you might say, well, that's a definite improvement. I can almost see the cat playing the piano now. Uh, but uh, I, I need it to be even better than this. I lost my blue pen. So if this resolution isn't good enough, then what? Subdivide again, right? So how about, okay, like this. Okay, and then just for sake of argument, let's name one of these. So uh, what, is, what is that one right there? So in the first place, it's going to be C something or other, but at what level? It's going to be at level two, and now we have to count, right? Okay, so let me count. Uh, do this. Uh, okay, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be at six, and then how far is it up? Uh, right, one, two, three, four. Six, four. Okay, now, what I want you to imagine is that for, for, the, for the input space, we, we, can, we can consider uh, the set resolved at, at any level that we like. So we can make these as fine as we wish. Okay, and in, in, in particular, so, so what am I trying to say? This is sort of the standard way to, 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 to think about something. If you, if you look at a human really closely, we have sort of, uh, at one level, a natural level of subdivision. And what's that? Okay, even before that one. Cells, Cells right? You look... I mean, I can see all of y'all out there, and, and, and from, from, from this level of resolution, you don't look like a collection of cells, but I'm, I'm quite sure that you are, except for that one of you. No, no. <laughs> I'm quite sure that you are. And then and, and even further subdivision is atoms, right? Okay, what I'm saying is that you can always get to a fine enough subdivision uh, for, for, for any kind of, of work that you want to do. Okay, and do understand this is for any dimension. Okay. Good. So, uh, <coughs> definition. Uh, D N. 
what am I, no. Dn of Rn is the set of all dyadic cubes for Rn at level n. Okay, so now we can now we can refer to that to uh, that set, a set of all conceivable cubes. Okay. So now I have a question for you. Uh, well, yes. Is it specifically descriptive? Not yeah. Well, okay. Here's the deal. Please don't write it. Yeah, I'll just say yes. You have to write it as a script. Because otherwise, what would it be colliding with? The derivative operator, right? This is the unfortunate thing, in, an unfortunate thing in math, is that D is used for, it's just way overused, right? Well, it's just, a, it's just how it is, I guess. So you've got to make all the fancy different kinds of Ds. Okay, uh, fine. So I have a question. My question to you is, is that, well, we can have a one-dimensional cube, which is to say an interval, right? Uh, we can have a two-dimensional cube, which is to say a square, a three-dimensional cube, which is a cube, and then we can have, you know, we can, ha we can have all of them. Okay, my, my question to you is, is how big are they? How big are they? So specifically, suppose that we have, suppose that we have a cube uh, and it's in D1, uh, sorry, uh, Dn of R1. Suppose that's the case. So what does that mean C is? What kind of thing is C? It's, it's an interval. It's an interval. So that means that, that, means that C, uh, C looks like this. It looks like uh, something like this. So why... Why, why the endpoints, thusly? That's the way we define it, right? We said that we're going to include the lower part, but not the upper part. Okay, how, how big is this? And by big, I mean one-dimensionally, so. One over two to exponent n. That's how big it is. So, so its length uh, is going to be one over two to exponent n, and the way I'm going to denote this is uh, with uh, volume. So it's one volume, the one volume of C is 1 over 2 to n. Okay. What about, what about if we take a C that's in the dyadic cubes for R2 <coughs> at level n? Then what kind of thing is this? It's a square, and in particular it looks like this. Okay, so I'm not interested, be, because we're here, I'm not interested in the one volume of this. What am I interested in? Two the two volume. Okay, so then uh, the, uh, whoops. So the two volume of this C is what? Well, yeah, so, so it, th this length is the same as that length. But you're going to have to square it, right? Because it'll be base times height. So, so it's, it's, it's that length horizontally and also vertically. So what, what it is, is it's going to be 1 over 2 to n, and then I'll say squared. Okay, how about a cube? That is to say, an, an actual cube. Okay, now you're just going to have to forgive me. I'm just going to draw a Necker cube. That's the best I can do. And you're just going to have to understand that, that, that the, the lower faces are included, but the upper faces are not included. Uh, how big is that cube? What's it, what is its three volume? Yes. 
1 over 2 to n to exponent 3. So w would you please tell me, what, it, what is the formula for the n volume of the n cube at level n? 1 over 2 to big n. Right. <laughs> to, 1 over 2 to big n, all raised to little n. Okay? So generally speaking, uh, if we have the dyadic paving at level big n in our little n, then who knows how you could possibly draw that. Uh, so the n volume of this thing is 1 over 2 to big N, all of that raised to little n, and then through just the magic of algebra, you could write this as 1 over 2 to n n. Okay. Yes? Um, just to be confident, uh, we choose big N based on how fine we want it. Right. Okay. You can think of it like the the resolution button on yes, yes. on uh, YouTube. Yes? And the lowercase n represents dimensionality? The, the dimension of the space that we're, that we're dicing. Yeah. Big N represents how fine you're dicing. Yes? So big N has to be in relation to something, right? If I give you the grid, you're not going to know what the big N is. Well, all, all that we're saying is that all of them exist. So we can consider we consider the dyadic cubes at level zero. That is to say, all the, all of the cubes line up with the integers. We could we could consider the dyadic cubes at level uh, level one. All all of them line up with the half integers, etc. They're finer and finer and finer. Yeah. Well, okay. So sh surely you could, right? You could. Th in principle, there's nothing wrong with plugging in negative capital N's. However, it's just not going to come up because we're not interested in making it coarser. We're only going to be interested in making it finer, which is to say we want, we, we, we want to increase big N. But there's nothing in principle wrong with negative levels. Yes? Uh, it's a way of making things more discreet. Y yes. So uh, to give the upshot, what it is is that we're, we're going to... We're going to discretize the whole world, and we're just going to say we're we're looking at the world at resolution, you know, whatever. We're looking at the world at resolution, say, 47, or 2451, or whatever you like. Okay, <clears throat> good. Suppose that. So definition. Uh, let f from R n to R B, what does this mean? Bounded with bounded support. That means that uh, you, could take the, you could take the set of everywhere where the function is not zero, its support, and you could draw a big ball around it. So that is to say, if you get far away from the origin, this function is zero everywhere, if you get far enough away. Uh, furthermore, on this set, on this set, uh, the, the, the function itself is bounded. It never goes, it never goes too far toward negative infinity. Uh, the image does, does not, and the image never goes too far toward neg uh, positive infinity. Okay. And like if domain has to be changed into a subset of Rn? Because Rn is not bounded. Well, re remember, remember that, uh, just, just to remind you, the support of F is the set of all x in Rn such that x is uh, not 0. Uh, no, f of x. Craziness. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that f is defined on the whole plane. f is defined everywhere. So it's defined everywhere going that way, that way, all directions. But the place where it's non-zero is, is a small set. It's bounded. So, you know, it could be, it could be like the support of F could be, that's supposed to be in the plane. I can only draw so well. So notice that you could draw a big circle centered at, the, a big ball centered at the origin that completely contains the support. So the fact that you can do that, that, that's what I mean by the support is bounded. <clears throat> okay, then we'll define 
define capital L, lowercase n, <laughs> of f uh, is the following. <clears throat> is the summation of, over all cubes that are in the dyadic paving at resolution n of space r little n of little m of c of f multiplied by the n volume <laughs> of c. Wow. <laughs> what could that possibly mean? <laughs> OK, so wh wh what are we saying? We've, we've cut up the, the set of all inputs. In, in a sense, you can think of it like we've pixelated the, the set of all inputs. And uh, what we're doing is we're saying, so ignore all of that for a moment. What is, li what is little m sub c of f? That's saying consider your favorite pixel of, in of inputs. And then consider what f does on that particular pixel. I'm t I, what we're talking about is I, I want the infimum, the infimum of f on that pixel the lowest one, the, the lowest output. No, e even not, not the lowest output, because you might not obtain the lowest output. There might not be a minimum, but there is an infimum. Okay, so then we're taking uh, the, lo the infimum of F on that C and then multiplying it by what? The volume of that, of that C, how big that pixel is. Okay, and then someone said it right, what is this? Th this is like a Riemann sum. It's saying, it's saying that this is base <coughs> times height. Base times height. So uh, specifically, to give you something to look at, remember, this is the best I can do here. Suppose that, <laughs> that this is a representation of Rn, uh, and that we have this particular cube right here. So we're looking at it at a, at a certain resolution. We're looking at it, at, yes? If we take a small uh, pixel to the sub and the in converge. We're going to get to that. <laughs> so so, so uh, one thing I want you to, 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 to see is that, uh, OK, suppose that this function does the following, just for, for sake of argument. Uh, so it kind of does this, and then it, and then it, it breaks, you know, and then, and I don't know, does, do, does this, say. So that's what it does on that particular cube. It's rough on that cube, because even it has a discontinuity there. Would you, would you please tell me, uh, what is little m? If I draw this over here, what is little m? Of, of on this cube, for that f, the, the lowest value. So little m is right there. Little m is right there. <clears throat> and then what this is saying is take that, take that height and multiply it by the size of that cube. Well, conceptually that's saying, consider this rectangle. That rectangle, that's called the lower rectangle, OK? So now, if I just defined, uh, so <laughs> by the way, this is called the lower rectangle. So why, why did I call it L? For lower, right? So then what's the, ne what's the next thing that I'm going to define? Upper. The upper, right? So the upper uh, at resolution N <coughs> will be, OK, so, so who, can, uh, who, who can tell me? So first off, we're going to have to uh, sum over all pixels at level n, all cubes. H how is it going to be, so, so this is sort of how it's the same, but how is, it, how is this one going to be different? Capital. capital M, thank you. So capital M over C of F, and then uh, the volume <coughs> the n volume of that cube, uh, et cetera. So now, in this picture, in this picture, what is big M? The highest point, right? 
So uh, this one is the highest point. So this is, this is saying that the, the supremum of all outputs on that cube multiplied by the volume of that cube. And that in the case that it's a one-dimensional cube, it's exactly this rectangle. A rectangle that is the lowest, the, the, the shortest rectangle that entirely covers the graph, right? Notice that there's lots of rectangles that are higher. For example, this rectangle is higher. But I want the shortest rectangle that's, that, that, that's over it. Notice that this, this rectangle is below the graph, and, and so is this one. But for, for little m, I want it to be the tallest one that is under. Okay. Now, another comment uh, about this is that this, this actually, uh, we're, we're multiplying, all of these can change, but these, these are all constant. What, what is this value? Right. So for, for the upper one, I'll, I'll factor it out, but please do understand that you can do it uh, for the lower one also. So you could, you could factor this out. It would be 1 over 2 to n n sum over all c in the dyadic paving of Rn of the soup, or whatever this thing's called, like that, driven. Yes? To clarify, that's 2 to the resolution times the dimension. Times the dimension of the space. Of the space. Okay. That's little and big n. Little and big n, yeah. <clears throat> Good. Any question about this? Okay. <clears throat> yes? Uh, so I'm going to guess now what we're going to do is take the upper and subtract the lower. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we do that, before we do that, uh, right, because that, what, so I like that. What would that be just like? It, do, do you get a strong echo of that would be something like oscillation? Yeah, we're going to talk about that, but we have to, we have to do some intermediate things first. Uh, <clears throat> it's only somewhat like oscillation, though, because, because, because the lower sum and the upper sum are sums. Okay, so uh, a remark. <clears throat> so the sequence... So in the first place, the sequence. So now what I want you to imagine is that uh, we're, we're computing the lower sum, and we're going to compute the lower sum over and over and over again. And each time we recompute it, we're going, to we're going to increase the resolution by one step. So we compute it, and we say, oh, that's terrific. And then we increase the resolution, and we compute it again. And we increase the resolution, and we compute it again. So the sequence that maps, that, that does this, uh, n to uh, L sub n of f is, so, so I'll give you, I'll give you two options. Uh, is this going to be uh, decreasing or increasing? It's a little, it's a little, <laughs> It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be increasing. So is increasing. And to be, to be quite precise, re really, it means non-decreasing. So understand that, that, that by when I say increasing, I mean weakly so. Because if, if, we were, if we were computing the lower sum for a constant function, then you, you always get the exact answer every time. It doesn't matter how <coughs> resolved it is or not. So let, let, let's take a look. Why should it be increasing? Why should it be that way? Uh, well, so let's consider uh, a picture like so. So suppose that we have a cube right here. <clears throat> okay, so that, that's some particular cube. That's the cube we're dealing with. And just for sake of our argument, consider just the one cube. And then consider that we've got it really pretty resolved so that, so that the function's looking flat-ish. So we, we've really zoomed in far. Uh, then then for, for, for resolution of this size, uh, what is the lower sum? There's just one rectangle, right? What would it be? It'd be this one, right? 
It'd be that rectangle. So, and in particular, we'd be computing the volume of that area in the case of what I'm drawing, but, but understand that this is in volume. Suppose that we increase to the next level of resolution. What is that equivalent to, to doing? Cutting it in half. And now for, for that, what, what do the rectangles look like? Right, that one is the same as it happens, uh, but this one we get a little more. Right, so can you see that this is, as a, as a result of increasing the resolution one step, we picked up that excess. And if we were to increase the resolution a little bit more, we'd take little bites out of those two. So, so uh, as you increase the resolution, the lower sum increases. Okay, now what am I about to say immediately after this? Right, okay, good. It, it's good to be predictable. Uh, so, so this sequence, the sequence which maps resolution to the upper sum at that resolution, uh, is decreasing. It is decreasing, and what do I really mean by that? Non-increasing. Non okay, good. For reasons that are entirely analogous, you can make your own staircase. <coughs> so, <coughs> Definition. The uh, so suppose we have suppose we have an F defined in the same way as before. So so F uh, is bounded with bounded support. One. The lower sum. So notably, what have I what have I left off? I've left off in. So this is defined as the limit, as the resolution goes to infinity, of this. So now, notably, notably, because this is a limit, what might happen? It might not exist. It doesn't have to exist. So understand, when I write that, I'm not saying anything about its existence. I'm just, what I'm saying is that supposing that the, li that the limit does exist, this is how we're going to denote it. Okay, the next thing, two, this is exactly what you think it is, right? It is the limit as the resolution goes to infinity of the upper sum at resolution n. <clears throat> okay, so uh, now we're in a nice position. We can finally define what integral means. What does, inter what does integral mean? And in what case, and, 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 and what is the case when a function is integrable? Yeah. So here we go. The definition is that, uh, again, if we have f is bounded with bounded support, f is bounded with bounded support, <coughs> then uh, when L of f is u of f. So understand that this means several things. So wh what, all, what all does this mean? Well, well yes. So th that's the first thing. What's the, what's the first thing? Both of these exist. This exists. That exists. And moreover, they're the same, okay? And we'll, we'll go through some examples where one or the other doesn't exist. And we'll, we'll also go through, through examples where they both exist, <laughs> yet they're not the same, okay? So when, the, when, when these both exist, <coughs> this common value is denoted as <coughs> integral uh, over all of Rn of f, and now you have to write something that's kind of weird, d n x. So that is like, that's like a dx from, from scalar calculus, except that, that x has a vector hat on it, and that is d superscript n, and there are absolute values around it. 
So briefly, just so you're not super curious about it, what you can, what you can imagine that this is, is this is something that measures the unsigned n-dimensional volume of a thing. So you can imagine some kind of shape sitting in Rn. This is the unsigned volume of it. Unsigned. That's the reason for the absolute value notation. In, in a few lectures, we're going to talk about how to do this with signed volume. And then we won't have the absolute value bit. Yes? Is this functionally an n-dimensional increment in the same way that dx is a one-dimensional No. No, because dx is, in scalar calculus is a signed increment. It, so, it, so it can be quite different. Good. Have a nice weekend.